If you thought we were past all the major releases from NVIDIA and AMD, you're going to be in for a surprise because two really important GPUs are coming very soon and they're going to mean a lot for not only stock but also much better prices. Let's talk about it. So we have two very major GPUs coming down the pipeline very soon, one from NVIDIA and then one from AMD. Now this is going to have all sorts of ramifications, not only on potential stock and availability issues, but as well as on potential price to performance. So first let's do a little summary about the last few months of releases. Of course NVIDIA released their 3080, 3070 and 90 and AMD recently released their 6800 and 6800 XT. Now, all of these launches have been marred by absolutely low availability, very high demand, and a lot of frustrated gamers. The second big thing that people are overlooking here as well, aside from the stock issues, pretty much only the expensive GPUs were released. I mean, we're talking about the 3080, even the 3070 does not fall into a more of a budget-friendly realm. Of course, AMD also released their high-end big Navi GPUs first, like the 6800, which starts pretty much at $579 on up for third-party models models. So as we can see here, basically a lot of people, even if they wanted a 3080 or 3070 and they had the available funds, weren't able to get it. And then most people that even if these GPUs were in stock, they probably wouldn't be looking at a seven or $800 GPU anyway. They're going to have something new from both Nvidia and AMD. They're now going to have other options on the market, which will allow more buyers to be able to enter into the higher end GPU space. So which GPUs are coming? First, let's tackle Nvidia. Now, reportedly, there will be a 3060 Ti coming and what's going to be very interesting about this GPU it's supposed to be priced at around $399 which is around $100 cheaper than the 3070. Now if you're asking is it going to be a good value compared to the 3070 and from a couple of leaked benchmarks it seems to be fairly close to the performance of a 3070 maybe something like 10% and of course it is going to have 8 gigabytes of VRAM of the regular GDDR6. Of course the 3080 and up will have GDDR6 6x which is technically a faster amount of vram a lot of people made a fuss about the 3080 only having 10 gigabytes because some games especially on ultra 4k definitely can start to eat up that vram fairly quickly but once again most of the people that are going to be buying a 3070 and the 3060 ti i believe these are gpus really meant for 1440p gaming and in that resolution i think you're going to be more than fine for a very long time with this type of vram i would only concern yourself with much more vram if you plan to upgrade and play at like ultra settings on 4k and even then not every single game is even maxing out a 3080 so we definitely have a little bit of headroom here i don't think people need to be as freaked out about it as you would think judging from the numbers so it's actually very similar to the 3070 and everything else across the board actually seems to have a lot of similarities with the 3070 so if we consider that the founder's edition is going to be about a hundred dollars less for maybe what's 10 to 15 percent close in performance that certainly doesn't seem like a very bad deal at all and then we get into a second major point and that's going to be stock and availability of these gpus that's been sort of a really important facet and point of every single gpu and cpu launch that we've had this year now here are my thoughts on 3060 ti i think a gpu like this has the probability of just having great stock numbers theoretically if we look at the 3070 i think most people will agree that was still a very troublesome launch not that many people got them but it was a better launch than the 3080, then the 3090, even uh, AMD 6800 and 6800 XT, which were even rarer, it seems, than the 3080. Now, the reason that we know this is that even if you check where people got these 3070 GPUs like Micro Center, on launch day, Micro Center even sent out an email saying they had 100 plus cards at certain stores. Now, if we compare this to the 3080 or the 6800 XT, there were really almost single digit numbers, like some stores had four to six, other stores had like 10 to 12, but it it seemed that no store really had more than like 15 or 20 of those GPUs. So the 3070 having over 100 and a lot of people were able to get their hands on them. I even did a poll with my viewers and I think maybe between like 13 to 14 percent were able to get them as opposed to a much lower number like two to five percent for the other GPUs. So this means that the 3060 Ti being very similar to the 3070 and maybe we can expect that sort of the yield for a GPU like this for Nvidia to manufacture because it doesn't have to meet 
meet the specification of a 3080 or even the 3070. Maybe they just have much better yields. It's cheaper for them to make and they can make a lot more of these as compared to some of the higher end GPUs. So that's something that would point to there maybe being more availability of something like this. And of course, by the time these GPUs really come out, hopefully they've been ramping up production, not only on the higher end GPUs, which historically were always in more limited numbers anyway, you are always going to find more 2080 Ti's than you are something like a 2060 or, or lower, just because a lot more people are going to have the means to buy those GPUs. And of course, having another GPU SKU on the market with a lot of people really wanting high performing next generation GPUs, I think it's going to help take a little bit of the pressure off, especially the 3070 and the 3080. A lot of people I think will be more than happy with the 3060 Ti and they don't necessarily have to step up to a 3080, even though at 699, the MSRP in the US, I know it's different in other places and I know MSRP on third party GPUs can jump around. That's still a very good value for the performance you're getting with the 3080 especially when compared to the previous generation 2080 Ti at around $1,200. So around $400 for a 3060 Ti, if the 3070 was already pretty equal to a 2080 Ti, that means the 3060 Ti should be within 10% of the 2080 Ti as well. Certainly very impressive for what is now one third the price, $400 versus $1,200. That's definitely pretty amazing. And that's why we can expect the 3060 Ti to be really high demand once again. And now the only difference here is we just hope Nvidia has an easier time manufacturing it because it doesn't have as high specifications as all the other GPUs. And now what about AMD? They've been pretty much answering Nvidia with all of the different GPU launches. For example, the 6800 is very competitive and beats the 3070. Of course, it's priced at around $80 higher with the MSRP, but the $649 6800 XT does run toe to toe with the more expensive 3080. Now these products so far have been very limited in availability and we're hoping that the third party custom cards GPU launch does go more successfully in their actually more on the market so far the reference cards as we know was a very very limited launch so we don't even really have to talk about that i think most people know but down the pipeline, AMD has the 6700 XT. One key point of this, it does seem like something that would be competitive with the 3070 and the 3060 Ti. I would think it would fall somewhere around that level. Most likely, I think it may be very close to the 3070 and perform better than the 3060 Ti. Just because the 6800 is already above the 3070, it would make sense for them to slot it somewhere in the middle. Now, of course, the pricing for AMD's 6700 XT has not been revealed yet, but we can assume it's going to fall somewhere between $400 and $500. I would think maybe a little bit more in that mid $400 range. You never know, they may go right for $400 in order to compete a little bit better with Nvidia's 3060 Ti, therefore making it a lot better for the consumer as they keep fighting along these different price points. Your differentiating factor with the 6700 XT, it appears as though most likely it should have around 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This is going to slot perfectly in between the 8 gigabytes between the 3060 Ti 37 as well as the 16 gigabyte GPUs, which are the 6800 and the 6800 XT. Of course, then AMD can still say that they're beating the 3080 in terms of VRAM because it's going to have 12 instead of 10, which could be useful in certain cases. But most likely, since this GPU is not going to be aimed for the most ultra 4K gaming, I don't really think that's a major point to consider around this performance and price point. But still pretty interesting that they managed to put 12 gigabytes of VRAM in there, even if it isn't the newest X variant still will give you a little bit more headroom and even though I don't think it makes as much of a difference I think on paper at least it looks pretty good for AMD when they're going up against Nvidia. And now when we talk about stock and availability of the 6700 XT, it's really hard to know right now because the launch of the 6800 and the 6800 XT were so abysmal in terms of the availability, we can't really assume that the 6700 XT is going to have much more stock. But of course, once again, just like with Nvidia being a lower end GPU, hopefully sort of the yields are better and they can actually produce more. And we're yet to see what the third party manufacturers will bring to the table in terms of availability. It could be more that these reference GPUs use are the ones that are more bottlenecked in terms of their availability as we saw with the recent AMD launch. Hopefully the third-party GPUs start to open up more and more consumers can get their
their hands on these GPUs. So to summarize, both of these GPUs seem like actually very good options for gamers. They still seem to provide a lot of the performance improvements that we're getting with the newer generation at a reduced price point and with the possibility of improved stock and availability upon launch just because they're gonna produce so many more of these GPUs because they're priced for more of the mainstream market. And we haven't even gotten to the real budget GPUs yet, which most likely will be released sometime later next year. This is still a very mid-range to almost high-end GPU coming in at around $400. But in terms of performance, you're still getting a lot for your money. All right, guys, if you like content like this, a lot more coming up. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.